Mom, it looks great. What better way to kick off this Wisconsin-themed dinner with family and friends than with this amazing array of specialty meats. I think they're gonna like this. You guys, dinner is served. Oh, you're one of those. You're a savvy consumer who wants to know what's in the food that you feed your loved ones. Okay, well, then we're just gonna hold off until we discover the real story behind Wisconsin specialty meats. Oh no! Emmy, no! Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. You're right. Before we can serve this feast, we need to find out where it all comes from and exactly how it's made. Come on, it'll stay warm in here. This is where it all begins, the beginning of specialty meats, right? How yep. do I begin? Yep, we'll grab a pig and let's get right into it. Come here, little guy. This pig farm near Wazika is where pork production actually starts. Here, sows are artificially inseminated to produce litters of about a dozen piglets. Each sow has about two and a half litters per year. Wisconsin markets around 800,000 pigs each year. These piglets weigh about three pounds at birth and suckle for about three weeks before they move on to the next phase of growth. People are always wondering what the animals actually eat. Uh, these animals, uh, when they're about 21 days of age, will begin a corn soy diet uh, with also minerals in there to develop the best that they can. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research that goes into what needs to be fed to these animals. Besides quality feed, providing pigs with shelter, warmth, and good caretakers is also part of the formula for raising healthy animals. So it's a great thing that the pigs are raised inside compared to being outside in the cold. Oh, absolutely. You can look outside on a day like today when it's about 20 degrees and how much better these animals do inside. Oh, and that's why the extra heat comes in handy. Yep, yeah, the sows like it to be about 70 degrees in here and the pigs like it about 85. And that's why the, the heat lamps go over the little pigs and on the mat so it keeps it a little bit warmer there. Yeah, I would too if I was naked like you, right? Right. When pigs begin their corn soy diet, most are moved to hog farms where they're raised over the next six months and put on an incredible amount of weight. He's gonna go from about three pounds up to about 280. Oh, it's a good thing I don't have to put on weight like that, right? Yeah. Actually, these pigs, uh, when they put on the weight, it's actually a lot of muscle. A.V. explained that by using a combination of refined genetics and formulated feed, farmers are raising pigs that are 16% leaner than 20 years ago. I also discovered that this hog farm has poor quality assurance certification. That means the employees are trained in raising hogs with the highest standards for quality, safety, and animal well-being. And to top it off, I found out it's a family business, from father to son <laughs> to an upcoming cutie. And this is just the first chapter of the Specialty Beef story. There's so much more. Come on, let's go. Beef is the second foundation in making specialty meats here in Wisconsin. And though we're noted as the dairy state, we also produce some of the finest beef stock as you're about to discover. Seed troughs are getting low. Guys, fill her up. So to grow anything, you need seed. Right here is the seed crop for the beef industry. So really this is where it all begins. Brian, why is this operation different than most beef operations? We would be what is defined as a seed stock operation in terms of beef seed stock. And these bulls that you see here today are going to go out onto ranches and farms throughout the Midwest and the nation, and they will sire the calves that end up in the feedlots across America. And it's our goal to use all of the available science and technology that will help us accurately predict the performance and the quality of the meat that goes on the table of the American consumer. So I know this looks like corn and grass and stuff, but I bet you there's a lot of science in here too. 
So we're not really looking for maximum gain. They eat a very balanced ration every day, and yet the ration that they're consuming is consistently delivered, ensuring their structural soundness, structural integrity, and fertility, quite honestly, since these are bulls that are gonna go out, travel through the pastures across Wisconsin and across America, and sire the next generation. So I have to ask, I know you've been doing this for 27 years. How has this process changed and gotten better over that time? Luckily, we've embraced science and the scientists have responded. And today we have actual data, hard, objective data that allows us to select the cattle that are superior for a combination of traits. Stay with us as we explore the next chapter in Wisconsin's specialty meat story. Welcome back to discovering the entire process of our specialty meat story. Heading across the state to Lake Geneva, we're about to roll up our sleeves and help with the next phase in crafting specialty meats from another family business. So we saw how these animals were raised on the farm. Our next stop is here at a meat processor where we're gonna answer this question. How do we turn this 350 pound side of beef into this specialty summer sausage stick? Well, first we have to take this and break it down into several pieces. Come on, follow me. Jeff, I'm ready to break these down. One thing I noticed were these purple marks on the meat. Jeff explained these are USDA inspection stamps made from grape juice to show they've been government checked for proper food safety handling. Four. Want to count up to the fifth rib? We're going to cut between the fifth and sixth rib in order to give us our rib roast, our prime rib. Okay. One, two, three. Once we have manageable pieces, they begin making prime cuts such as prime rib. The electric meat saw makes clean cuts and saves on elbow grease. Here, they process mostly grass-fed and grain-finished beef, with each offering some differences. Your local meat processor can help answer questions about the advantages of each. A grass-fed beef will normally not have as much cover or fat onto it, not quite as much marbling in it. And you want the marble for, gives you more full flavor? Flavor, yep. Okay. Flavor and tenderness. With all that trimming, hmm, makes you wonder how much beef they lose in the process. On a typical half, once you get done cutting a half down, you'll lose about 35 to 38%, depending on how much you cut. Okay. The distinct color to the beef comes from what they eat, plus how they're aged in the cooler. Yeah, it is. It's aged very well. We usually age everything around 14 to 16, 18 days around here. What do I press? You better stand back for this one. This is my first cut of prime rib. Sure, it looks easy but you'd be surprised how the wrong angle can quickly wreck a processing table. Whoops. Very good. I went too deep? Oh no. Okay, even using these no-cut gloves, using these razor-sharp knives makes me just a little nervous trimming the fat. All right, so I'd like to keep all of my fingers, so we're gonna leave the bandsaw to Mark. I hear you're pretty good with that, and I'm gonna watch. This first section here is going to be sirloin steaks. Okay. What's your favorite cut of steak to eat? I like the porterhouse. Yeah? Yeah. Now it looks much cleaner. Yeah, very. Okay. Now we start with our porterhouses. So now just keep cutting. And these we call our T-bones. Prime's fine, but I'm here to craft something special with a beef pork blend back in the sausage room. All right, so we've started with halves, gone to quarters, then pieces. We've put this through the grinder and we are ready to make brats, but not just any brats, real Wisconsin cherry brats. Jeff, let's go. All right, let's get her mixed up. They begin with 100 pounds of ground beef and pork, then add some of their secret blend of seasonings. Finally, we added the family recipe for cherry brats. That was top secret. It's an old family recipe yeah. that we're the only ones in the state that has. Wow. When it was completely mixed, it was time for some brat making magic. Okay, go ahead. Oh. There you go. It just does it all? It just does it all, yep. So am I supposed to do anything else? No. You can move this up a little bit. Okay. okay. They're not even going to believe that I was part of making these specialty family reunion feasts. This is awesome. 
Discover creative brat recipes you can make at home by going to discoverwisconsin.com and choose specialty meats as the destination. Keep your apron on. Next, we're using that beef I cut to learn some secrets from making summer sausage. Welcome back to discovering how we make Wisconsin specialty meats. Moving on to summer sausage. Well, it all begins with mixing lean beef with curing mixtures and special seasonings. <laughs> Whoa, lots of garlic in this batch. Once that's mixed, we add higher fat content and something else that surprised me. It's a lactic acid producing culture that helps ferment and give the summer sausage its unique flavor. Plus, works as a preservative when it's cured. We use the same machine for making brats, but with a different twist. So the casing looks a little bit different for the summer sausage than it did for the brats. This is a synthetic casing. Obviously it's larger in diameter. And then once we fill it, it goes into a smoker to add even more flavor. So we're gonna hold on to the string. We're gonna tap. Next, we twist and seal the end with this machine. <laughs> Careful now. Push that down. Then into the smoker with it, where it's cured or fermented for 12 hours, smoked for three more, then cooked off until it reaches the right temperature. Finally, it's a clean wrap. Like so many specialty meat processors in Wisconsin, Lake Geneva Country Meats is a multi-generation family-run operation where they pass down their heritage and specialty meat crafting secrets. With beef processing, brats, and summer sausage checked off my list, it was time to head north again. Hey, we're here. Let's go. This time to Kakana to try my hand at crafting some iconic products made from that other white meat, pork. All right, so we have the half a hog, and we're going to break it down into its primals, and we'll show you where the ham and the bacon and the other cuts come from. Let's get to work. Well, first thing you do when you have a half a hog laying here is you break off the front shoulder and usually that's done on between the third and fourth rib where we break it. John explained that roasts and steaks come from the shoulder plus old time picnic ham, country style spare ribs, hocks, and trimmings for making sausage products. But I was mostly interested in the other parts, that midsection and ham. Step away. So I got it marked where you need to cut it. All right. cut straight through. You're removing the ham. Phew. After sawing off the ham, we separated the midsection into pork chops and the pork belly. That's where spare ribs and bacon come from. Slice out the spare ribs and presto, you've got a slab of wannabe bacon. Well, there were a few more steps yet. Once it's trimmed square, the trimmings go to making sausage products and the slab's ready for making bacon. Then I was ready to cleave out and claim my hand. If you do it, I don't suggest using a cleaver because you might hurt yourself, but you have to remove the, the hock from off the back shank of the ham. All so, right, maybe you should do it? Sure, I can do that for All you. Right. Cleaver can wait. So what we do is we cut through the, basically through the joint right there and you remove the back pork hock from the ham. Okay. It's close to the meat. Ah, uh, kind of at least he trusted me to trim off the excess fat. Well, now I can honestly say I got it ready for the next step. All right, well, I helped cut it, so okay. I think my name should go on it. Okay. Let's go cure we it. We can do it, sure. The best way to learn more about the meat you buy is to ask your local meat market. For a list, visit our website and choose Specialty Meats under the Destination tab. Stick around as we're getting close to making serious bacon plus uncovering professional secrets for crafting award-winning hams. Stay tuned. Glad you're still here because we're about to ham it up, literally. So whether you're making a Christmas ham, ham and eggs, ham sandwich, ham is really one of those specialty meats. So we're gonna try to get it out of Tim. What makes this ham so good? Because they say it's one of the best in the state. First, they took my ham and sent it through an injector machine. 16 needles inside the machine inject the ham with Hain's special curing and flavor formula of salts, sugars, and secret spices. And now it's all pumped, and now we just take it and we throw it into our tumbler. It was like a small stainless steel cement mixer that tumbled and cured the batch of hams for four hours in the big cooler. From the tumbler, they placed the hams in netting material for hanging. 
my ham join the others on the rack where they actually cure with the flavors for four days in the cooler. Wait a second, at this step, we already missed the family secret. All right, what is it, Tim? And then with our smoking process, that finishes them off. Uh, it gives them a nice finish, a nice flavor on the, on the interiors. Uh, and if I have to tell you any more, I'll probably get fired. All right. So they have been brined, cured, tumbled, and netted. Now they're just ready for the smoker. Using hickory wood smoke, they slow smoke the hams for five hours, then cook them off for another four hours. Voila, Haines State and National Award-winning ham. So now that we know all of the steps and all of the things that went into making this Wisconsin specialty ham, well, the next step, well, really is up to you. If it's me, it's going in the oven, and not that oven, my oven at home. I didn't forget to smoke my bacon either, using some of Haynes' old-fashioned curing and smoking secrets. Oh yeah, who's hungry for some bacon? Our bacon went from the smoker to the cooler before slicing. Uh, um, I also learned you've got to watch out for these Hain characters <laughs> and their definition of fun. Hey! Hey! Wait for me! Finally, we sliced the bacon with this cool machine. Wasn't sure if they trusted me with more knives. It smelled so great, I was begging for a fry pan. But we had to package it for sale. Well, most of it. This one is mine. I sliced it. I'm taking it home. But hold on, there's one more specialty meat that shouts that it's from this state. We're getting ready for the real Wisconsin specialty brat. Check this out, green and gold brats, Packer brats. Tim, I love it, what's in here? Well, these are our regular brat uh, recipe, and then we take that recipe and we add Wisconsin cheddar cheese in there and then jalapeno flakes. Oh boy, these guys don't lack imagination when it comes to designing their specialty meats. Well, I have done it just once before. Okay. Although these rats are really pretty. Yeah, the color, the jalapeno with the cheese, it really brings out the, oh, the color. Yeah. Uh, and just when I was starting to show off my brat crafting skills, oh, and go. stop it. Oh, stop, oh, stop hitting the knee lever. <laughs> All right. That's the first thing. Maybe I'll stick sure. to Emmy Fink and not Emmy Hain. I'm not ready to be a Hain. <laughs> Besides teaching us how to craft specialty meats, Cane Meats and Lake Geneva Country Meats gave us a final parting gift, their family cooking secrets. I don't know about you, but now I truly appreciate everything that went in to bring this food from the farm to the table. Plus, this little journey made me a smarter consumer. You guys, it's gonna be worth the wait. Hey, pull up a chair and join us. Why don't you start with this brat that I personally made? I'm Emmy Fink, and I think you're gonna enjoy discovering this piece of Wisconsin. Cheers. 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 You know, Wisconsin is filled with so many exciting things to do. So travel Wisconsin and find out for yourself. There's a destination just waiting to be discovered by you. For more information and bonus video from the episode, go to discoverwisconsin.com. While you're there, click on the Kadiddle link to watch entire episodes from this season or past seasons. And don't forget, Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discover Wisconsin Radio all across the state. One of these guys, you just twirl it around, and it tightens it up and makes it into a better one. 